By the time you all watch this video, there will literally be less than 3 days, 22 hours, 8 minutes, and 21 seconds until we finally get to watch the very first episode of the final season of Game of Thrones. And since we are getting ever so close to that premiere in this video, I want to discuss 4 leaks that have somewhat been confirmed, but we must remember one thing before we venture any further. Nothing can ever truly be 100% confirmed when it comes to Game of Thrones until it airs on their television screens. Here's your sign and let's begin. Again. Now before we get started, please, slap a like on this video as the like goal is going to be 2,420.69. Hehehe. <laughs> also, make sure you're subscribed and then, this is the most important part, make sure you have your notifications turned on so that way you get alerted every single time I turn my Game of Thrones video throughout at this long night. Now like I stated at the beginning of this video, these leaks are mostly for just pure entertainment purposes. Everything is to be taken with a grain of salt because nothing is guaranteed to go down. Even though I'm going to talk about some things that have seemed seemingly been confirmed, we still don't know what exactly is going to lead up to that situation or what they actually filmed behind closed doors in front of a green screen. And with that being said, the first leak that I want to discuss is something that the advertising department in Game of Thrones hasn't really focused on that much. One thing they have is the battle for Winterfell. We know that this is going to happen in Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 3 and all of the trailers, all of the promos have been pretty much putting this battle on blast. It's advertised as being greater than the Battle of the Bastard, better than Helm's Deep and Lord of the Rings. In the deciding battle between good and evil. Oh, I'm a super massive Game of Thrones fan. I'm sure most of you watching this video are as well. They're misleading us into thinking that that battle for episode 3 is going to be the major big battle for the final season. In my opinion, this is not the actual case. We've seen footage of what's going down in King's Landing and all of this massive destruction leads me to believe that the Night King will make it to King's Landing. In Game of Thrones season 8 episode 6, the final season for Game of Thrones, there will be a battle in this episode and it's going to to be the siege of King's Landing. The problem is, we don't know what the opposing sides are going to be. We've seen the Dothraki marching into King's Landing. We've seen the Unsullied marching into King's Landing. We've seen weird structures pop up, images of which have been seemingly scrubbed from the internet. It almost looked like something that the Kronogs men built, and that would be Howland Reed and Mira Reed and their family. For a little while, you could actually take a 3D tour of King's Landing and look at all the destruction. It looked as though a dragon literally entered the city with dragon flame, flew all all the way through it with his mouth open breathing hot flame all over King's Landing. There's a huge trail of debris and burned shit. And some of the air quote leaked scenes that I've been sent that involved what was being filmed in King's Landing included things like Sansa being kidnapped, taking prisoner. The seas is actually Jon Snow showing up with half a northern army, half of an unsullied and Dothraki army, and he's laying siege to King's Landing in an effort to try to get back his sister. Or, uh, cousin I guess. Another leak that was similar to this involved Tyrion actually being the one captive, and it's Jon Daenerys who are trying to discuss Cersei's terms of surrender. One of the leaks had Jon Snow dying in that initial meeting with Cersei, and this is what causes Daenerys to hop on Drogon and then rage through King's Landing. He ends up igniting wildfire, and this is what causes most of the explosion and debris everywhere. And at this point, I think I've kind of talked enough about King's Landing. I will mention a few more confirmed leaks towards the end of the video that have to do with King's Landing, Jon Snow, and Cersei. Now, the next confirmed leak that I want to discuss is sort of like a combo one, and these were things that were confirmed by David Nutter when he did a Reddit AMA last year. He confirmed that there will be multiple direwolves in Game of Thrones Season 8. In his episode, there are no flashbacks in particular. Now, just for clarification's sake, David Nutter is actually the director who's most famous for directing The Red Wedding. Now, when it came to The Red Wedding for Season 8, his response was, when you compare Season 8 to The Red Wedding, just hang on to your seats. Now, FYI, David Nutter actually directs the very first episode of Game of Thrones Season 8, which will be coming to your screens in less than three days. With that being said, we have to prepare ourselves for insane amounts of death in the first episode. I don't know if it's going to be the major characters, maybe not even the second tier characters, but there's definitely going to be several scenes that will be reminiscent of the Red Wedding. And just moving on here, another thing that has been seemingly confirmed for Season 8 is that Daenerys, Sansa, and Arya will not necessarily take a liking to each other. Daenerys won't really feel a type of way, but Arya and Sansa aren't going to accept 
accept her willingly into their arms. This will cause some sort of turmoil and conflict between Jon Snow, his sisters, and the woman he loves. As soon as the first rounds for the Game of Thrones Season 8 promotion campaign begin, we were treated with that Winterfell is yours, your grace scene with Sansa and Daenerys. They were starting way back then to allude to the fact that they're not going to get along the way everyone sort of thinks they will. I mean, to be honest, I knew that Sansa is going to play the game. She's going to continue to play the game with Daenerys, and she likely won't cause any conflict with her. And we're just going to sort of have to wait and see how that plays out on screen. And with Jon and Daenerys arriving to Winterfell in Episode 1, we're going to quickly get to see that hash out. We know the battle for Winterfell is going to be in Episode 3. It's likely going to start at the very end of Episode 2, so we'll get several scenes that are going to have all of these characters interacting. I want to see who makes the first move. If it's Sansa who doesn't take a liking to Daenerys because maybe something she says about Jon or maybe the way she sort of cares herself, or if it's Daenerys who's off put by Sansa and maybe she can sense that there's a little bit of rivalry and jealousy between Sansa and Jon Snow. You all let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section. Now since we're in Winterfell discussing the Starks, let's go ahead and mention everyone's favorite dire puppies, Ghost in Nymeria. I was thinking about this the other day and it's actually really interesting that there are exactly two dragons and two direwolves left with the possibility of there being an undead direwolf somewhere in the Night King's army. It sort of sets the stage up perfectly for a last of everything type of situation. Maybe there's one direwolf, one dragon, one member of House Lannister, and one villain who all get to survive in the very end. It's like they're lucky that they get to survive, but Planetos and Westeros will never see the like of anything like them again because they are the last of their kind. And we have been told by several of the higher-ups in Game of Thrones and HBO that there will be several scenes involving direwolves this up-and-coming season. In my opinion, it will be in true Game of Thrones fashion, and they will bring them all back for some glorious scene, Bran will likely warg into them, and then they're all gonna die. Maybe one of them will survive. There's actually only two of them, Nymeria and Ghost, but maybe the reason why we didn't see Ghost much last season is because he was off-screen mating with Nymeria. Maybe at the very end, after all the direwolves have died, we'll stumble upon a pack of them in the force, like we did in the very first season of Game of Thrones. Imagine the little puppies trotting through the snow and running up to embrace Jon Snow or Daenerys. Oh, wait. This isn't Disneyland? And keeping on with the theme of the Starks, it has also been confirmed that Jon Snow's lineage will be revealed this season. Now, without getting into too much detail in the scene in particular, supposedly the moment when it happens is pretty funny and sort of like off the cuff. There's a bunch of people who react to it differently, but for the most part, the people closest to Jon do not treat him any differently. Now, this is my own speculation here, but I feel like Arya Stark meeting with Jon Snow will be one of the greatest reunions that we've ever had. Jon Snow unknowingly gave her a sword that saved her life on multiple occasions, and she's never forgotten that, and she's carried it by her side pretty much the entire time aside from when she was training in Bravos. Their bond and their connection has to be rekindled this season, and we're likely gonna get a very touching moment when Arya walks up behind Jon in the Godswood. Now, one thing I did to sort of help me speculate on how the meeting between Jon and Arya, or how the reunion between Jon and Arya will go down, is going back to season 7 and watching the reunion between Arya and Sansa. Now, Arya and Sansa pretty much never got along their entire life, so this is likely why Arya was being such a creep towards Sansa when she first got there. Until we found out she was playing the game of faces with her, we genuinely thought that Arya might kill Sansa Stark. And that's what got me thinking and questioning why she wouldn't be like that towards Jon Snow. Jon's bringing a foreign queen into Winterfell, and Arya will likely take up the stance that Jon put the Starks in danger. Even though Daenerys may be there to help them, if she were to ever turn on the Starks, it would be screwed. Screwed. Daenerys has two massive dragons, and Jon pretty much marched their entire army into Winterfell. He may be trying to keep the Stark safe, but Arya may interpret that as bringing more danger than has ever been brought to House Stark. Time has most certainly hardened Jon, Arya, Sansa, and Bran, but time has also brought them paranoia. Arya will believe rightfully so, but the mistrust between them will likely bring them more turmoil than it will anything else. And just to sort of wrap up what I was saying earlier about the King's Landing in that situation, it has been confirmed for a while now that Cersei and Jon Snow will meet at some point next season. It's most likely going to be towards the end of the season, and we don't really know the details behind this meeting, but they spent way too long filming this scene and had way too much camera equipment brought up for this to be some sort of fake scenario. What may happen is, it may be switched around and there's actually a giant green screen there, and they did film a scene in this location, but what we were privy to outside was not actually what went down. In my opinion, this is way more in line with the theme of Game of Thrones. They did say that they were going to film several fake scenes to mislead us, but that doesn't mean that they couldn't have actually 
actually filmed a real scene at this location. Now, I've had people send me leaks saying that this is actually Jon Snow bending the knee to Cersei. In these moments, Jon agrees to bend the knee because Daenerys is held captive. Jon doesn't have any other options and he wants his queen to be freed, so he bends the knee to Cersei and tells her that he will take all of his army, go back up north, never venture down south, as long as Daenerys is released and their child is unharmed. And apparently, Cersei agrees to this, but on closer inspection, she plans to put Daenerys in the dragon pit, loaded with wildfire, and just as Jon Snow gets close to going to capture his queen or rescue her, she plans on killing both of them, blowing them up, and then destroying their armies outside the gates of Winterfell. Well, apparently Cersei's plan backfires, she ends up killing Daenerys, and then Jon Snow goes on a rager. He hops on Drogon and burns everything to the ground. He literally goes crashing in through the Red Keep and decapitates Cersei right in front of the Iron Throne. Now, my thoughts on this are obviously I don't want Daenerys to die, but if it results in Jon Snow going full Aegon on Cersei's ass, well then hell yeah, do it. We know that Daenerys can be brought back, she's the chosen one of her lore, we've got Melisandre and all the fiery priests coming over to help them, so if Danny has to die for like 20 minutes in order for Jon to pull an Aegon on Cersei and behead that ass, well then I'm all for it. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just joking, but I'm gonna move on. Since we're getting kind of tight for time, I'm just gonna rapid fire these last few things that I want to discuss in this video, and they're less confirmed, more so things that I want to see happen, and they have all but been confirmed to happen because of the way the show's sort of going and the foreshadowing for some of these events. Now, the first one is that the very last episode, Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 6, will have not only a death, but also a wedding. This is what happened in the very first episode of Game of Thrones, and we know this show is built on circular history. History repeats itself, and in that first episode, Jon Arryn died and Daenerys was wedded to a Dothraki savage. In this final episode, I predict that Cersei will die and Daenerys will get married to Jon Snow. On second thought, I guess since Jon Arryn was Hand of the King, maybe it makes more sense for Hand of the King to die. Am I alluding to the fact that maybe Tyrion's trial will be that death for the final episode in order for us to get the wedding? While it's possible, it has been foreshadowed for a long time, all the way back since Daenerys first met Tyrion, and the theory of Tyrion betraying Daenerys has become so popularly accepted by the leaked fanbase, it's near impossible to convince anyone otherwise. And another thing that I want to discuss that hasn't necessarily been confirmed, but the past has alluded to it, and that being Jon Snow will ride a dragon. Jon Snow is a Targaryen. I have explained several times in my videos why dragons need riders, why Targaryens or ancient Valyrians first tamed the dragons and didn't send them off into battle on their own. A dragon needs a rider. Daenerys has two dragons left. She's mating with her nephew, who's also a Targaryen. It only makes sense for him to jump on Rhaegal and fly off into battle. They alluded to it in the very first trailer for Game of Thrones Season 8. It's all but confirmed to happen at some point during Game of Thrones Season 8. I feel like it makes the most sense for it to happen during the Battle of Winterfell. I've been sent leaks where Rhaegal supposedly lands near Jon Snow, kills a bunch of deads, and begins breathing, kills a bunch of deads, kills a bunch of whites, and begins breathing flame on everything. Jon then mounts Rhaegal out of pure necessitation. Would you all let me know what you think about that down below in the comment section? And then the last thing for this video is that it has not been confirmed at all, or really alluded to in the past, but I want some more information on the Night King. This is the final season of Game of Thrones. They've been building him up over eight seasons. We got to see a little bit of his back history, but not enough to really explain the motivation for wanting to kill everything. Like Dan and Dave have said before that they like the idea that there is no motivation. He just represents death. He was created to kill, and that's all he's going to do is destroy stuff. Well, in my opinion, that's kind of dumb. I feel like there needs to be more to him than just uh, someone who's going to go around killing everyone who forces the major characters to put aside their differences. Oh, wait, that, that's literally, that's his purpose. That's his point. Literally, the Night King was created to not just kill everything, but to bring the main character. The Night King is, is literally the ultimate peace treaty. If you don't stop doing what you're doing right now, then you're gonna die. But if you stop doing what you're doing, come together and join forces, then you actually stand a strong chance in defeating the Night King and ultimately getting peace. Oh man, did I just explode your brain or what? I know I exploded mine. All right, I wanna thank you all so, so much for watching. If you could please, Slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 2,426 <laughs> Also, make sure you have your notifications turned on so that way you get alerted every single time I drop a Game of Thrones video throughout this long night. Also, please subscribe. We have a subscriber goal of trying to reach 75,000 right before Game of Thrones Season 8 begins. And I know we're not going to reach that goal exactly, but let's still see how close we can get. I want to personally thank each and every one of you all for watching this video. A super special shout out to my Patreon family over on Patreon.com 
slash Sir Hunts Reviews. I want to thank you all again for watching. My name's Mark, and this has been Sir Hunts Reviews. <laughs>